Hello, my name is Kishwani. This K E S H W A N I Kishwani. We are here because we want to prepare for SAT. We have been solving SAT math problems out of this book here, the SAT Official Study Guide 2020. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. Today we'll solve some problems beginning with page number. 1010. We start with page number 1010 and we'll pick up from number 28. Yesterday we stopped at number 27. Number 28. In number 28 we are told that the slope of function f, uh, function g rather, we have two functions f and g. We are told the slope of function g is 4 times the slope of f. That's the first thing we are told. Second thing we are told is that the function function f, we are actually given a graph for it, I'm going to reproduce it, something, something like this, it goes, it goes through it goes through 0, 3 and it goes through I'm just picking two points at random uh, on the graph that, uh, that, that appear and the easiest one to pick one is the intercept. I picked one and I'm going to pick one more. Uh, let's, let's say 5. This is 3 so it's 4 and 5 somewhere here. 5 and 4. So we are told, we are told that the slope of function g is 4 times the slope of f. We are told that the function f looks like that. And one more thing we are told is that the g, g goes through 0 and negative 4. And the question that they're asking is very straightforward. What's the, what's the value of function g when x is equal to 9? In other words, what's, what is f of na, uh, g of 9 rather? What's the value of the function g when x is equal to 9? When, when uh, x is equal to 9. Let's go through it, shall we? Well, we know the slope of g is 4 times the slope of f. If we can somehow figure out the slope of f, we can figure out the slope of g. And if you have the slope of g, if you have the slope, you already know what point it goes through. We'll have the point slope formula and we'll be, we'll be, we'll be all set. Slope of f we can figure out from here, the fact that it goes through these three points. So let's find that. Slope of f is simply the change in y over the change in x using these two points here. So change in y this is 5, this is 3, so that's the 2. 5 minus 2, I'm not going to do all the actually. And then 4 minus 0, I'm not going to write down 4 minus 0, I'm just going to put down 4. That's it. In other words, going from here to here, the change in x is 4, the change in y is 2. It goes from 3 to 5. That's all, it's half. It's half. So that makes our life easy, which implies that the slope or function g must be 4 times half because it's 4 times f slope of f 4 times half is just 2 4 times half is just 2 very good now we can figure out the function oh, oh now the next thing we have to do is figure out the function function g that is and once we have the uh, function itself we can figure out what's, what's the value of that function when x is equal to 9 so let's do that we are running our room here we have a couple of choices. I'm, I'm just going to use this formula. y minus y1 is equal to m times x minus x1. This is called the point slope formula. We have, a, we have a one point that it goes through and we know the slope. We know one point it goes through, it goes through this point, 0 and negative 4. And we know the slope, the slope is 2. So y minus y1, which is negative 4, pay attention here, y minus y1, which is negative 4, right here. So it's going to become y plus 4 is equal to m, which is a slope, which is 2, times x minus x1, which is 0. y plus 4 equals 2x, which tells us that the y is equal to 2x minus 4. And now we can figure out what's the value of this function when x is equal to 9, right here. When x is equal to 9 is 2 times 9 minus 4. 2 times 9 is 18. 18 minus 4 is 14. And that's all there is. There's nothing to it. The answer is C. Another way we could have figured out this function is sort of using 
the points law formula. This is the points law formula. It is called points law formula because we are using the coordinates of one of the points that the function goes through, which we are told that it goes through 0, negative 4, and the slope. Other way we can use is the slope intercept formula. Slope intercept formula looks something like this y is equal to mx plus b. Now, do we know the intercept? Do we know the, uh, the intercept? The answer is yes because we are told that it goes through it goes through 0, negative 4. So we know that when x is equal to 0, y is equal to negative 4, we know the y intercept. Y intercept is negative 4 right here. It's going to be the same, it's going to be the same exact thing. Y is equal to slope, which, which is 2, right here, 2 times x plus the y intercept, which is negative 4, right there. Y is equal to 2x minus 4, and then put in the value for the x. That was number 28. Number 29, we are given this equation here, x squared plus 20x plus y squared plus 16y is equal to negative 20. And we are told that this is the equation of a circle. And we don't have to be told that, we can clearly see that it's an equation of a circle. The question simply is, what are the co what are the coordinates of the center? Before we before we do any work, let's write down the standard equation of a circle, where we can identify the coordinates, and that looks something like this: x plus a whole squared plus y plus b whole squared is equal to r squared, r being the radius. In this format, when it's written in this format, the center of the circle is simply the negative value of this a and b, negative a and negative b. So the question is, can we somehow write this equation that we have here in this format? And the answer is yes. We're just going to make it a perfect square, this one. So let's begin then. So we have x squared plus 20x plus y squared plus 16y and we are told that it is equal to negative 20. Okay, that's what happens here. x squared plus 2 times x because we are writing it as a squared plus 2ab plus b squared so that we can write that as a plus b whole squared. That's what we are doing here. So a squared which is our x times 2 times x times b, the question is what's the value of b? The value of b is given, is determined from here. It's, we need 20x. So far we have 2 times x, which is just 2x. If we multiply it by 10, it becomes 20x. And that tells us that the b squared needs to be 10 squared. That part is done. Now, we work on this guy. Plus, y squared plus 2 times y times, we need 16y. 16y tells us that we have 2 times y, we need 8. 8 times 2 will give us a 16y. That tells us that here we have 8 squared minus 20. And now we need to undo everything that we did here. Here, by inserting 10 squared, we are adding 100 to it here, this side. We have to do the same thing here. Whatever we added here on this side, we must add the same quantity there. Now, we are not interested at all what that quantity is. It is, makes no difference to us because that quantity will determine what r squared is and that will tell us what the radius of the circle is. But nobody is asking us what the radius of the circle is, so we don't care. We just want to find the center. And the center is right here. When we, when we put this together, we get x plus 10 whole squared plus y plus 8 whole squared plus the radius square, whatever that happens to be. There you go. Our center here, our center is the negative value of this thing, negative 10, just like here, a plus a and plus b, the center is negative a and negative b, so it's negative, negative, a, negative 10 and negative 8. And that is answer choice b. Let's do number 30, shall we? Number 
number 30 I believe is the last one before we get to the grading question. Number 30, we have an equation here, x squared minus a, and the question is, which is, which of the following four equations that are given to us in the four answer choices is equivalent to what we see there? So let's find out, shall we? Answer choice A says, y is equal to x plus a times x minus a. Now what is supposed to happen if you multiply this out? This is the same as a a plus b times a a plus b times a minus b. a plus b a, a plus b times a minus b is simply a squared minus b squared. a squared minus b squared is a plus b times a minus b. And that's what we will have. If, if, we would, if we would multiply this out, we'll get x squared minus a squared. But a squared is not what we have here. We just have a. So the answer is not a. Let's look at B. Answer choice B says y is equal to x plus root a, oh there we go, times x minus root a, there we go. Now what's going to happen is the same as before, when we multiply it out we're going to get x squared, the middle terms are going to cancel out, minus root a squared. This quantity squared and that quantity squared. What do you suppose root a squared? Square of the root a is simply a. We end up with x squared minus a which is exactly what we have here. Therefore the answer is b. The correct answer is b. In D, we'll end up with a middle term, 2 times x times a, D is no good, and C is just even ridiculous because it's got a negative 2 at the bottom. The answer is B. Let's look at 31. Now we are into the gradient problems. Let's see what we have. On page number 1000 and 12. In 1012, we are told on, on number 31, we are told that 5 horsepower equals 3730 watts. The question simply is 2 horsepower equals how many watts? Well, let's set it up with a proportion. It's already set up here horsepower over watts. Just set it up with a proportion, that's all there is. So, 5 horsepower. 5 horsepower, we are told, is 3730 watts. The question is, if that ratio is consistent, if it's a fixed proportion, which it is, the problem tells us. So in that case, if you only have 2 horsepower, how many watts is that? That's all. Cross multiply and solve for x, so we're going to end up with 5x equals 30, 3730 times 2, which means x is equal to 2 times 37, 3730, rather. over 5. In other words, this x is going to go on the top and 5 is going to get the bottom. That's it. Just divide top, top and bottom by 5. We know this, this quantity is divisible by 5 because it ends in a 0. Let's divide it by 5. How many How many 5 does 3 have? 3 has no 5. Three is, 3 is too puny to have any 5. What happens to the 3? That 3 goes and joins the 7 and becomes a 37. How many 5 does 37 have? 37 has, 37 has 7 5. 7 5 is a 35. After we take away 35 from 37, we have a remainder of 2. What happens to the 2? That remainder of 2 goes and joins the 3 and becomes a 23. And 23 has 4 5s. 4 5s are 20. After we take away 20 from the 23, we have a remainder of 3. What happens to the 3? That 3 goes and joins this 0 and becomes a 30. And 30 has 6 5s. Now that we divided the top by 5, we must divide the bottom by 5, which was the whole point. And that's it. 746 times 2 is what we have to, what we have to figure out. 746 times 2 will be 12, carry 1, 9, 14. There you go. The answer is 2 horsepower is, is equal to 1492 watts. 
Number 32. Number 32. In number 32 we are told that there is an original painting which has the dimensions of 29 inches height and width of 36 and a quarter. That's the original painting. The original painting has these dimensions 29, 29 by 36 and a quarter. We have a reproduction. We don't have the original painting, we have the reproductions where with each with each dimension one third of the original. One third of the original. As you can see, there's a lot of writing here, a lot of talking about it, but what they're asking here is absolutely ridiculous. What they're asking here is, what's the height for this reproduced painting, the painting that's a reproduction, that's not original. Well, it's very straightforward. We're just told that the dimensions are one third of the original. What's the height? What's the height in the original painting? The height in the original painting is 29 inches. That's the original, that's the original height. If you have a reproduction where all the dimensions are one third of it, then the height of this one is going to be this guy right here. That's all. There is nothing to do. There is absolutely nothing to do. And just grid in. Don't don't fuss about it. Don't try to convert this into decimal. Don't try to convert this into compound number. Don't do anything. Just grid in. It's a gradient problem. Just grid in like this. Twenty nine slash three. And that is all we have to do. That is all that you need to do here. No need to make a, make a fuss about converting into decimal. It's not necessary. And no need to try to convert this into mixed number because you can't grade in mixed number. It's not possible to grade in the way it's presented. The grade that is presented doesn't allow one to grade in mixed number. So just leave it like that. Number 33. Sometimes you have to do a lot of talking for nothing at all. Number 33. In number 33, we have got three points P, Q, R, and S. Four points rather. And we are told that P to Q is X minus 1. We are told that Q to R is X. And we are told that R to S is 3X minus 7. And we are further told that this distance P to Q is same as the distance R to S. Distance P to Q is same as the distance R to S. The question simply is, if that's the case, if this distance, if this distance is equal to this distance, then in that case, how much is the distance from P to S? Again, it's a much ado about nothing at all. They're simply giving an equation where we're told that this quantity is equal to that quantity. It's a very simple linear equation. We solve for X. Once we solve for X, we'll find the answer. Let's do that then. So PQ is X minus 1 is equal to 3x minus 7. Bring the x to that side. If you bring the x to that side, you'll get 2x. And bring the 7 to this side, so you're going to end up with negative 1. And when you bring the 7 to this side, to positive 7, which is going to give us positive 6. 2x is equal to positive 6. x is equal to 3. If x is equal to 3, if x is equal to 3, x minus 1 is 2. And if x minus 1 is 2, then this quantity must also be 2. This quantity has to equal 2 because we are told that these two distances are equal right here. You know, it, not, that it's, not that it's a lot of work, it only takes a second to figure it out because if you put in 3 here, 3 times 3 is 9, minus 7 is 2, but that is unnecessary. If this is 2, this would have to be 2 because that's what we are told. There we go. P to S is simply 2 plus 3 plus 2. 2 plus 2 is 4 plus 3 is 7. So P to S is equal to 7. Let's do 34. 34, the very last problem on this page here. In 34, we are told that the point 
two five lies on this function f of x. We are further told that f of x is equal to k minus x squared. The question is, what's the value of k? Well, what are you supposed to be going to do? We just can simply plug in the value of x and y in this function, because f of x, f of x, that's the value of y. So y is equal to k minus x squared. You know, when y is equal to 5, x is equal to 2, just put it in, solve for k. When y is equal to 5, x is equal to 2, there we go. Bring the 2 square to this side, so k is going to equal to 5 plus 4, 9. That's all. We'll stop right here. We still have four more problems to go, which we'll do tomorrow on day number 60, when we meet again. In the meantime, in the meantime, if you wish to get hold of me, if you would like to, if you would like to hire me to help you get, get ready for the SAT, I can help you with the math, obviously. I can help you with the, uh, the writing portion, which deals, with, which deals mostly with the grammar part. And I, I can help you with the uh, vocabulary parts. If you would like to get hold of me, you can send me an email at kishwaniprep at icloud.com or visit my website. Alright, I'll see you tomorrow. Bye now.